Hello guys. So in this video, we will learn about encoder decoder architecture. I will first talk about why we need this, what it is and then how it works. Okay. So before starting, the assumption here is that you already know what LSTM is and how it works. Okay. So let's get started. The first thing is why, why do we need encoder decoder architecture? Okay. So in our traditional LSTM that we learned, we were addressing text processing problems where we were able to solve variable length inputs, right? So we had uh, some inputs, uh, let's say three inputs and each of three, three inputs will be a sentence and each sentence will be of variable length, right? Sentence one, sentence two and sentence three. So these three will be inputs. And uh, when I was explaining you guys on the sentiment analysis problem while I, am, I was implementing it, I told you how do we address this problem and our output would be number of classes, number of classes. So if you just take the same example on sentiment analysis, it could be positive, negative or neutral, right? So this is what we have learned with our traditional LSTMs. But at the later stage, what happened? The problem was not just variable length inputs. So we had some tasks wherein we had to address the variable length outputs as well. Right. So just think in what cases we will have variable length inputs and variable length outputs. So the classic example would be language translation. Right. So language translation. So what is language translation? Translation from one language to other, another language. Right another language. So, for example, let us consider translation from English to Hindi. Okay. So, if I just say English to Hindi. Right. So, let me just write few sentences in English and then we will talk about their conversion in Hindi. So, for example, if I is my first statement is thank you. Right. In English, let us say First statement is thank you. So if I have to convert it to Hindi, I have to translate it to Hindi, it will be just dhanyavad, correct? Dhanyavad, right? So thank you. There are two words in input and if we want to translate to Hindi, it will be just one single word, correct? So this is one example. So another example could be uh, if you say uh, before starting, before starting. So this is another phrase in English and in Hindi it will be Shuru Karne Se Pehle. Shuru Karne Se Pehle. Right? So this is how before starting gets translated into Hindi. Okay? If you take another sentence for example, you had food, you had food. So it will be converted to Aapne khana khaya, right? So, what is the difference in all these three sentence translations? So, in the first sentence, we had two words. The translated language had only one word. So, input sequence length was two, output sequence length was one, correct? In the second example, input sequence length was two, but the output sequence length is four. Shuru karne se pehle. Shuru karne se pehle. Okay. And then in my third sentence, you had food. So English had three sequence, three tokens. And our translated language in Hindi, we have three tokens, right? So you can see there is no hard and fast rule that the length of the input sequences must be equal to the length of the output sequence when we are dealing with language translation, right? So in order to ad address these issues with the sequence to sequence, and these two are not the only problem with sequence to sequence, right? So when we talk about language translation, so we just listed out two problems. One is variable length input, correct? Second is variable length output. And the third one, the most important thing is before translating from one language to another language, we have to understand the entire thing first, right? So we have to understand the context first we have to understand and we have to wait till we hear complete thing till we hear the end of the sentence right 
then only we will be able to translate it in a correct way. So these are the three major problems when it comes to problems like sequence to sequence, right? So in order to address this, uh, we have something called as sequence to sequence models and there are many architectures to solve this. Today we will be dealing with encoder decoder architecture, okay? So what I'll do, I'll just move these things a little bit below so that I will be able to explain the diagram in a better way, okay? So this is how encoder decoder architecture looks like. So what it is? So we, I will first explain it to you the overview. Then we will separate out the components individually and then I will explain it one by one. Okay. So what happens? We will have the inputs at the encoders. So let's say for example, you had food. You had food. So it's a question mark. So it's a question, right? So if this is the input, we are expecting the output to be Aapne khana khaya, correct? So this, this should be our output. So what happens at the encoder end? And what happens at the decoder end? And what is this middle layer, which I have written it as context vector? So if you guys are not able to see it clearly, it is context vector. Okay. So now let us study what this encoder is separately. Right. So let me just copy this okay so now so this encoder thing so this internally has lstm units so it can have one lstm unit it can have multiple lstm units stacked on top of each other okay so for understanding first let's assume that we have only one lstm unit inside encoder so how this looks like so i'll just draw a small block okay it will have all the hidden layers and everything i have explained about lstm in my earlier videos please go and watch that if you haven't watched it okay this will get input at time step t this will get context from ta previous time step t minus 1 and activation from previous time step t minus 1 and this will output context at this particular time step and activation at this particular time step. So people will address this as hidden state. Okay. So hidden states are nothing but our activation. So this is how a basic LSTM block looks like. So what happens in encoder decoder architecture? Now I am explaining you encoder part. Okay. So listen to it carefully. So what happens in encoder? So you all know how LSTM works, right? So it will contact it will calculate C of t and A of t at each time step. So initially, in, if we take the same example here, you had food. Okay. So the input sentence is you had food. Right. So for now, let's don't let's not worry about the punctuations. Okay. We'll keep that aside. So first, these three words we have. Right. So we cannot feed this as it is to our LSTM model. Right within encoder. So what we will do, we will convert these into some numbers. Convert into numbers. And there are multiple ways to convert it into numbers. One easiest way would be one hot encoding. Right. So OHE stands for one hot encoding. Or we can train our own word to vec model on the corpus that we have. And we can pass in the embeddings. Okay, so these are all the ways we employ to convert the text or these inputs into numbers, right? And one more thing, we cannot supply entire statement as one single unit. We have to pass the tokens, right? So in this sentence, you had food. Tokens are you had food. Okay, so if I just talk about one hot encoding, you will be, let's say you is at position one, add two, put at three. So what happens? It will be one, zero, zero, because we have three words in our vocabulary. Let's assume that we have only three words in our vocabulary. So you will be represented as one, zero, zero in case of one hot encoding. 
hat will be 0, 1, 0, food will be 0, 0, 1. So, these things we will supply to our LSTM block at every time step. Okay. So, now you already know what LSTM block does. Correct. So, what it does? It will, let me just rub this encircled thing here. Otherwise, it will be confusing. So, now what we are trying to do, we are feeding the words as one hot encoded inputs to our encoder block. And what we have in our encoder block, it is again a simple LSTM block within it, correct. And just to tell you, it will receive one input at one particular time step, let us say time step 1. So, in our example, it will be u. So, this will be x1, right. So, it will be fed input and it will also take two additional things as input that is hidden state from the previous time step that is a t minus 1 and context from previous time step c t minus 1. So, at the beginning this will be a of 0 and this will be c of 0 and these both things will be vector of zeros. Okay? So, hope you know this. Now, what happens? It will take u as input at the first time step it will calculate C1 and then A1. Okay. For the second time step, the LSTM block, if we unroll it, it will get X2. In this case, it will be had. Correct. So, again, it will compute A2 and C2. Right. C2. And in the third time step, if we again unroll it for the third time step, so the input would be x3, it will be foot, correct. And again, it will output c3 and a3. Now, what we can do in order to inform our encoder block stating that input sequence has ended, ended we can additionally have one word or one token which represents end of sequence. We can also call it as an EOS. So, in some architecture we will use this and in some other method we will not use it. It is completely up to you whether you want to use it or you do not want to use it. Okay. So, let us remove this for now. Okay. Otherwise, you'll, you guys get confused. So, I just rub it. Okay. So, now we have processed the sequences at all the time steps. And remember, this will not be plain u, it will be 100, zero zero. this will be fed as 0, 1, 0, and this will be fed as 0, zero 1. So, this is our one hot encoding for English language. English language. Okay. So, what happens at the end of encoding? So, after getting the input from all the time steps, it will compute one final context C3 and hidden state A3 or activation at third time step, right? So, these two things obtained at the end together we call it as context vector. Context vector. So, that is what you, you see it here in the middle. So, this is our context vector. So, now you guys have understood what encoder does. Okay, and if you know LSTM, so it has LSTM, right? You also know how this calculates with the help of forward propagation, right? With the help of forward propagation, we will compute our context vector after encountering the end of sequence or after ending our inputs at some particular time step t. Okay, so this is the first step, and whatever you see here the middle option here it is the context vector this will represent entire input sequence entire input sequence so no matter how long our input sequence is so let's say our input sequence has around 20 tokens all those 20 tokens will be represented as one single context vector in our encoder decoder architecture 
So broadly speaking, encoder encodes the data received at different time steps and it computes the context vector that will be the output from encoder, right? And while decoding, context vector will be the input and then we will start our decoding process which I will explain now, okay? So let me just copy this decoder block here, okay? So now coming to decoder. So what it receives? It receives as input the context vector, right? This will be our context vector. And what is this context vector in our example? It will be C3 and A3, correct? Okay, so hope you guys are following me till now, okay? Now what happens with the decoder part? This is interesting. So we should inform decoder that boss our input sequence is complete. You start decoding that and start translating it to the desired language. So what happens? Initially we will nudge the decoder with the start token. Okay. So once decoder receives start token as input, it understands that okay, I have to start my translation now. Okay. Then what happens during decoding phase? So as soon as this start token is received as input to the decoder, decoder will start outputting the predictions. So y hat at time step one. Okay. And within this also we will have our LSTMs. So decoder is also having LSTM units. Okay. So hope you should not have any doubts in this regard. Okay. So it's the same part. So LSTM remains same whether in encoder or decoder. It's just the working of decoder when it starts to work and how it works that will differ. Okay. So now what happens after we receive the after decoder receives the start input token, it will start predicting the output. Okay. Remember this is again a LSTM, correct? Decoder is also a LSTM. So what we will do, we will start unrolling this for multiple time steps, right? So this is our x1, okay? Start token will be, will be our input to the decoder at time step 1. So it will be x1. Now at time step 2, x2, while training our encoder decoder part, while we are training this particular neural network that is encoder decoder model, what we do, we will pass in the actual output at time step 1. So in this case, our you had food was our English sentence and Hindi was Aapne khana khaya, correct? Aapne khana khaya, correct? So, Whatever might be the first word predicted by the decoder, we will leave it and then we will actually provide apne as our input at my second time step that is x2. Okay, so that will be my y1. This is our actual value. So by considering this as input, it will predict y hat 2. Okay. And again, if we unroll it for my third time step, so now it will be waiting for x3 and this x3 will be the actual value that we want at the second time step that is khana, right? So this will be fed as input and it will again pass in some predictions as output that is why I had 3. So similarly, we will unroll it for one more time step. Okay. So if we unroll it for one more time step, sorry, the input at x4, time step 4, it will be khaya. Correct. So what we are doing, we are actually feeding the correct input words at each time step as inputs to our decoder LSTM box. So again, after receiving this input, it will give us predictions y hat 4. Okay. Then what happens? If we unroll it for the next time step, 
x5 right or what we can do uh, let's say uh, the input is khaya we can end this translation here itself with our example at hand so what we uh, want as y4 y hat 4 we usually want this to be end of sequence okay so this should be the prediction at time step 4 so this should be our output so now what happens during training so let's say at the first time step it did output khana instead of apne so apne is our desired output but instead it provided the output as khana right so this is wrong correct and similarly in the second time step after apne we have to predict khana khana is our correct word right so instead of that let's say it predicted khaya right and here it will predict khana so input is khana output is khana so this output doesn't make sense right khana khaya khana doesn't make sense right so it should be apne khana khaya correct so we have our y true actual values it will be apne khana khaya correct so of course this will be one hot encoded again for hindi language so it will be one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one okay so now what happens so these are our actual values and we have our predicted values and what are those so first is khana so that is zero one zero khaya zero zero one and again khana right so zero zero uh, it's khana khaya khana right so it's it will be zero one zero so you might be thinking why it is producing wrong outputs why because it just started to get trained so we just started training it so that's acceptable wrong outputs are acceptable so in order to correct these errors what we do we will do back propagation back propagation and what we do in the back propagation so we know that this decoder and encoder blocks have lst units in it so it will have its own weights and biases associated with it so we will again apply the chain rule we will calculate the loss with respect to each outputs and with respect to each weights weights and activations okay so this will be applied i uh, hope you guys uh, have seen my video on back propagation and what the chain rule is right so using that we will back propagate the error and calculate the gradients okay so what are these gradients derivative of loss with respect to weights and biases so that we can update our weights and biases in order to minimize our loss right so in this case of language translation we will have a softmax layer here at each time step we will have a softmax layer okay softmax so let me write a separate block below okay so decoder right we will receive start and we will have our have it unrolled for different time steps so this will be actual y1 this will be actual y2 and this will be actual y3 so during prediction what we do we have y hat 1 and we will have the softmax layer so why softmax so because we are treating this as a multi class classification problem why multi class classification because let's say in our hindi vocabulary we have three words just for understanding purpose we have three words in our hindi vocabulary okay and those are aapne khana khaya right so these three are our hindi words so what we do we take the probability of each word as our output so this will be the output of the softmax so it will be probability of aapne at the 
first time step. So y hat 1. y hat 2 will be, it will be a conditional probability, right? So probability of aapne given aapne. So we are giving some input, right? Then it will be probability of khana given aapne. So let me just write it down separately, okay? So we have the Hindi sentence aapne khana khaya, right? So at the first time step, the prediction at y hat 1. So it will be probability of aapne given start token as input. So this will be conditional probability, okay? So similarly, what is the probability of khana given start as input? And similarly, what is the probability of khaya given start as input? So this will be the probabilities at this particular time step y hat 1. So what will be the output? So whichever of these words has the highest probability. So let's say we have 0 0.3, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. Okay. So let's say this is for apne, this is for khana and this is for khaya. Correct. So what is the highest probability word? It's 0.4 which is associated with khaya. Correct. So our initial prediction could be khaya. So that will be our first output at time step 1. So similarly, if we go at time step 2, predictions at time step 2, now our input is actual y1, right? So what is the actual y1? It's apne. Correct? So this conditional probability will change now. So it will be, what is the probability of apne? I am talking about the softmax layer calculations, okay? What is the probability of apne given input as apne? Okay? Calculate the probability for the word khana given the word aapne. What is the probability of word khaya given the word aapne. Okay, so these three are our conditional probabilities. So this is what softmax layer calculates at this particular time step 2. So let's say again we get some numbers 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0 0.2. So aapne. Khana khaya. So in this case, 0 0.5 has is the highest probability which is associated with the word khana. Correct? So y hat 2 will be khana. So similarly, it will compute the probabilities while predicting y hat 3. Again, in this case, the conditional probability will be different because the input sequence would be khana. Correct? So this will be our y2 which is our x3, correct? So this is how a decoder computes the softmax predictions and then outputs the word. So what happens if the predictions are uh, wrong? We will have the loss associated, right? Loss, right? So we have something called as loss and cost function, right? So the cost function would be, the cost of this particular output would be very high because the outputs are wrong okay so what we do we will calculate the impact of the impact on the cost on different parameters that is changing the weights how this affects the loss changing the biases how this affects the loss right so these in turn are dependent on how the uh, change at time step t is affected by change in the input at time step t minus 1 and output at time step t minus 1. So this is again chain rule. So we again apply chain rule and compute the gradients. Okay. So during back propagation, what happens? We will back propagate till encoder layer. We are not back propagating and updating the weights only at decoder layer. We will back propagate till encoder layer. Why? You might ask or you might argue stating that only decoder is responsible for translating the language from one to another. Why you guys are updating the weights associated with encoding layer? You can ask that question, right? So the answer is, so whatever the prediction we receive at the first time step at the decoder end, 
it is actually dependent on something called as context vector correct and this context vector is a result of encoder operation correct so if our context vector itself is not properly constructed the decoder will never be able to do its job properly and we will never be able to achieve the proper language translation okay so i'll just summarize this language translation with encoder decoder architecture okay so it will be easy for you to remember so just a summary now so what we did first step construct vocabulary for source language second construct vocabulary for target language okay then third convert take the input sequences and output sequences so we will say prepare training data prepare training data so while preparing the training data what we will do we will convert the sentences into tokens so we will tokenize them we will convert the tokens into one hot encoded vectors right so this is our preparing the training data fourth step what we will do we will start training our encoder and decoder lstms okay so this is the overview of how encoder and decoder architecture works okay so now we have seen how decoder works during training so let's say we have successfully reduced the loss after multiple back propagation and forward propagations and we have we are able to successfully reduce the loss so what happens during testing phase right so you know that during training phase the decoder lstm blocks will actually receive the actual values as input correct so here while training phase this x2 would be the actual value at time step 1 y1 correct so during testing phase during testing phase what we do so we will ask decoder to start decoding by supplying start as the input token so it will predict y hat 1 we will take this y hat 1 and then supply it as input which is our x2 now so instead of actual values which we passed during the training while testing or actually translating from one language to another language we will pass the tokens predicted at previous time step as input to our next time step so in general xt will be equal to y at t minus 1 so this will be the inputs to unrolled lstm blocks during decoding phase of our testing step okay hope this is clear so i have tried to explain encoder decoder architecture as simple as possible uh, we will also try to have some implementations of language translations and uh, let you guys understand it how it works okay and how we can implement it using keras so that's it for this video guys hope i have helped you in understanding encoder decoder architecture and yes one more thing so i told you uh, eos as the end of statement token while decoding but we can restrict decoding while testing it out in two types okay in two ways so one would be we can continue decoding till we encounter end of statement token or we can fix some length fix some length as the desired length for output or the translated language and then cut the decoding at once we reach the particular length of the sequences okay so this is how encoder decoder works and how we can truncate the output produced by decoder during actual translation okay so that's it for this video guys if you like my content please give it thumbs up share with um, share with your peers and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe it will help me motivate and produce some more great contents like this okay so thanks one and all till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye